Information presented in the following program is for entertainment purposes only and should not be taken as a statement of fact. Welcome to Tales from South Florida, the audio scrapbook that looks at the people, places, and events that made and make South Florida a unique place to live. And now, with another talk down memory lane, your host, Bill Monty. Welcome to Tales from South Florida. In this episode, we're looking at the tale of South Florida celebrities, part one. And with it being February and Black History Month, we're going to have a special focus on some special people from the South Florida area. First up, we're going to look at Sidney Poitier. Now, some of you might already be going, Sidney Poitier has a connection to South Florida, and what would that be? For those of you who don't know, in case you're younger and listening to this program, Sidney Poitier was one of the great actors, film actors of our time, certainly of my lifetime. Uh, The number of films, especially in the 60s, of the 1960s, he must have been the big star of the 1960s, I think. I'm sure there are others that come to mind, but I don't think anyone made quite the impact theatrically as as Mr. Poitier did. He was a Bahamian and uh, American actor. He was a film director. He was a diplomat after he retired from the uh, from entertainment industry. He was the first black actor and first Bahamian to win an Academy Award for Best Actor. And on February 20th, 1927, Sidney Poitier was born in Miami, Florida. He was the youngest of seven children, born to a couple who were Afro-Bahamian farmers who owned a farm on Cat Island. I assume that's somewhere in the Bahamas around Nassau. Uh, the family would travel to Miami. This this blows me away. The family would travel to Miami to sell tomatoes and other produce to wholesalers. Now think about this. 1927. So they would have to get on a boat, get all of their produce on a boat, and on several occasions throughout the year, maybe monthly even, take that trip on the water to Miami to deliver and sell their produce. This is how they made their living. Now, Sidney Poitier's father was also a cab driver in Nassau, I understand. Sometimes I think we forget about what it really took to build this country uh, before we had all of our modern conveniences, like podcasts. Uh, (laughs) You know, people did it with such pride and dignity, and they just did what they had to do to get by. And certainly all of this helped shape Mr. Poitier into a fine actor And a fine gentleman also, by all accounts. Mr. Poitier was born in Miami unexpectedly. His parents were there on business, and his birth was two months premature. He was not expected to survive, but his folks remained in Miami for several months. And then once he was better as an infant, he went back and grew up in the Bahamas. His birth in the United States, however, did entitle him to U.S. citizenship. At age 15, around um, 1942, He was sent to Miami to live with his brother's large family, but he found it impossible to adjust to the racist attitudes uh, in Jim Crow era Florida. I read his autobiography several years ago, and he goes into detail about being followed by the police and the racism that he encountered. Really just a horrible time for us as a South Florida community and for the nation, the way that things were obviously being done back then, and to a certain extent, I'm not sure we've made a whole lot of progress today. After a year of living in Miami and South Florida, Mr. Poitier abandoned the Miami area to move to New York, and from there created the legacy that would make him remembered forever. He joined the American Negro Theater, which helped land his breakthrough film role as a high school student in the film Blackboard Jungle. He received critical acclaim for his role in The Defiant Ones with Tony Curtis, And he made history, becoming the first African-American to receive an Academy Award for Best Actor nomination for The Defiant Ones. Six years later, he would go on to win the Academy Award for Best Actor in a performance for the film, one of my favorite films, Lilies of the Field. That was the movie that got me into Sidney Poitier. I remember seeing it as a kid. I've watched it many times since then. The film still holds up very well. It's filled with humor. And it doesn't ever slop over into sentimentality at any time. It's, his character could have been played by an actor of any race because that was not the point of the film. It was about this one person set into this situation with these nuns from, I believe, Germany or somewhere around the German area who, uh, in, in Arizona or New Mexico who needed a church built. And they kind of trick him into doing that. 
Uh, it's an amazing film. Get it, watch it if you get a chance. Just to hear him sing the song Amen over and over again within the film. So Sidney Poitier, also a South Florida celebrity. Next, I want to speak about Vanette Carroll. Now, Vanette Carroll might not be as recognizable a name as Sidney Poitier to you. She was an actress and a theater director, for which I think she was more well-known. She was the first African-American woman to direct on Broadway with her 1972 production of the musical Don't Bother Me, I Can't Cope. And she was the only African-American woman to have received a Tony Award nomination for direction. In 1957, she formed her first all-black cast to present Howard Richardson and William Burney's Dark of the Moon. And in a second production of that, Down the Road, that helped launch the career of a young man, uh, I think we all know him now, of James Earl Jones. In 1976, she collaborated with Mickey Grant and Alex Bradford on Your Arms Too Short to Box with God, which garnered three Tony nominations and was an adaptation of the gospel according to Matthew. And while Miss Carroll was not born in the South Florida area, she did move to Fort Lauderdale during the 1980s where she founded the Vanette Carroll Repertory Company where she remained as artistic director and producer until her failing health forced her to retire in 2001. So this was a pretty phenomenal repertory company that she helped found in Fort Lauderdale. First, it recognized and, and helped to produce theater that was aimed at a black audience. While doing that, she was producing some really great stuff. If, if you're not familiar with it, it was a, a church, and then she, uh, it, it was no longer a church when she took it over, of course, and she made the theater company uh, out of that church located near downtown Fort Lauderdale on 6th Street on the south side of the New River. It's been a while since I've been there. It was home also to the Fort Lauderdale Film Festival for several years, showed movies as Cinema Paradiso, and I believe is still doing that under another name. So it's now like a movie house. Wonderful place to go. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful theater. And I hope it's still running and up in operation. If you still don't know who Vanette Carroll is, I refer you to the episode of All in the Family, where Archie had to go to the hospital to have his gallbladder removed. While there, there is a doctor who is treating him, and he needs to receive a blood transfusion. The doctor is a Caribbean woman, and she is played by Vanette Carroll. I had occasion to meet Miss Carroll at a fundraiser back in the 90s, late 80s, early 90s. And she was a delightful woman, very kind, just a delightful person to talk to. She passed away of heart disease and diabetes in Lauderhill on November 5th, 2002 at the age of 80. Next up, we want to talk about someone who was born in South Florida and maintained her roots and even after she passed away is now buried in South Florida after this message. Cirque du Soleil Echo, under the big top at Gulfstream Park from February 22nd to April 21st, 2024. Cirque du Soleil Echo is a spectacular performance combining poetry, stagecraft, daring acrobatics, and technology, exploring the delicate balance between people, animals, and the world we all share. Tales from South Florida listeners also have access to special discounted single tickets and group tickets. To learn more, join our Facebook page, Tales from South Florida, or we will be giving away a pair of tickets. All you need to do to be entered is to write talesfromsouthflorida at gmail.com and say, I want to go to the Cirque. Cirque du Soleil Echo, under the big top, Gulfstream Park, February 22nd to April 21st. Be there. Esther Elizabeth Roll was an American actress best known for her role as Florida Evans on the CBS television sitcom Maud. That was for two seasons and its spinoff series Good Times, for which she was nominated for a Golden Globe Award for Best Actress in Television Series, Musical or Comedy in 1976. And in 1979, Esther Roll won the Emmy Award for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Limited Series or Special for the television film Summer of My German Soldier. She was born in Pompano Beach, Florida. Hi, Pompano Beach. To Bahamian immigrants, her parents were both born and raised in Nassau, New Providence. She was the 10th of 18 children. The 10th of 18 children, wow. And graduated from Blanche Eli High School in Pompano Beach. She studied at Spielman College in Atlanta and then moved to New York. She had a wonderful career. So for those of us who only remember her as Florida, a role for which, and I'll go into this a little, a little bit later, uh, I just thought she was just perfect for. But Roll was a member of the Federal Theater African Dance Troupe, 
and she became the troupe's director back in 1960. She appeared in productions of The Crucible and Blues for Mr. Charlie, and probably one of her most prominent early roles was in 1972 in the Melvin Van Peebles Broadway musical uh, Don't Play Us Cheap, and she also starred in the film adaptation of that. In 1977, she worked with Orson Welles in his Haitian-influenced version of William Shakespeare's Macbeth, and played Lady Macbeth. Can you imagine Florida being Lady Macbeth? However, we all know she was best known for a television role as Florida Evans and was introduced as Maude Finley's housekeeper on the show Maude. After two seasons, uh, that was spun off into Good Times. Now remember, this is where, you know, everything was happening in television was spinoffs from Norman Lear television programs. You know, you had uh, Maude spun off from All in the Family, the Jefferson spun off from All in the Family, and once Maud was out there, then uh, Good Times was spun off of, of the show Maud with B. Arthur. And was really a great, funny show. So I, in looking at it, and I look at probably the Jeffersons and Good Times as the two shows during that time frame that portrayed the, uh, a white person's version of the black family in America. Certainly the Jeffersons were over the top. The portrayal of the characters was over the top. The stories weren't really grounded. I'm not saying they never were, but it really was what it was supposed to be, high theater. Not not high theater like in classy, but high theater as in uh, high emotions, high laughs, things like that. To me, Good Times represented what life was probably really like for a family of African Americans living in a big city. Except for the character of J.J., who I did not care for at all. And probably when I started losing interest in the show is when he became a prominent character. Uh, Esther Roll was nominated in 1975 for Best Actress for her role in Good Times. And if you didn't know this, she was 19 years older than the actor John Amos, uh, who played her husband James. The James Evans character was only added after Esther Roll fought hard for a father figure and husband to be added to the show. Now, that's really significant, I think. And, you know, based on research I've done, I think that probably... Uh, she was butting heads with Norman Lear a lot on a lot of things. I think he wanted the show to be one thing, and she had a very definite idea. And I think when she was winning the battle, it was a better show. That's just my opinion. Anyway, the, uh, the rise of Jimmy Walker's character, J.J., and his catchphrase, Dynamite, she felt took the show in a frivolous direction. John Amos agreed. He was fired from the show after the third season. They actually killed his character off. And, and I think it was a year later, uh, a year and a half later that Esther Roll quit also because she felt they just weren't making any progress. She did return for the last season of the show. In 1979, she won an Emmy for her role in Summer of My German Soldier, which was a made-for-television movie. She appeared in guest-starring roles on The Incredible Hulk. I gotta go back and find that one. Uh, she was a surprise guest on RuPaul's VH1 talk show when her mod co-star B. Arthur was the guest. They had a great reunion on that. Her first screen appearance, I did not know this, was in a, an uncredited role in To Kill a Mockingbird, the 1962 film with Gregory Peck. Uh, she later appeared in the Gordon Parks' film The Learning Tree. And, of course, I remember seeing her as uh, Idella in Driving Miss Daisy, it's just a film I just love and adore. And her character had didn't have many lines, but every time she was on screen, she just dominated. And I understand she was up against Morgan Freeman Jr. most of the time uh, and Jessica Tandy. But when she was on screen with her little side comments, she really just stole the scene every single time. A memorable role that I do remember her for was an HBO film called Rosewood. If you haven't watched it, you should. It's an important film uh, that we have just, especially here in Florida, we have just tried to sweep away and not remember this ever happened, but really an important film. She played Aunt Sarah in that film. She was fantastic. She was just wonderful in it. She was in the film uh, The Mighty Quinn with Denzel Washington and Robert Townsend, and her last film was Train Ride. That was released in 2000, despite the fact that it was filmed uh, much earlier. Uh, Esther Roll died on November 17, 1998 in California. She had diabetes and passed away at the age of 78. She is buried in Westview Community Cemetery in Pompano Beach, Florida. So if you ever want to pay your respects, you can just go there. The cemetery is a historically black burial ground created in 1952, a time when the laws and customs of Florida did not permit white people and black people to be buried in the same cemetery. Good grief. I mean, come on. Good grief. Esther Roll's family donated over 100 items of hers to the African American Research Library and Cultural Center 
in Fort Lauderdale, which is a beautiful center if you've never been. The collection includes gowns, a black raggedy Andy doll she endorsed, a recording of poems that were recited by Roll, and awards such as the 1974 NAACP 8th Image Award for Best Actress in a Series, and her 1979 Emmy for her role in Summer of My German Soldier. Well, those are just some of the wonderful people that we had that are South Florida celebrities, and we're going to be looking at them uh, as we go through the series here and talk about all the different people that were either born in South Florida or had an impact on South Florida. Uh, Finally, I want to dedicate this episode of Tales from South Florida to Vince Romberg, who during the 1990s through the early 2000s was a leader in the South Florida theater community. As the founder, producer, writer, head bottle washer of the Public Theater of Fort Lauderdale, Vince provided many opportunities to performers, including me, your humble narrator. With an emphasis on bringing the plays of Shakespeare to South Florida and championing plays and musicals for the LGBTQ plus community, Vince helped to alter the landscape of local theater for the better. He recently passed away at his home in St. Louis, and while he may no longer be with us in body, his spirit and drive to make the world a more welcoming place will always be remembered. We miss you, Vince. And that will wrap it up for this Tales from South Florida. We invite you to come back, please, and join us every Wednesday as we drop new episodes. We've got a lot of exciting stories to tell you in future Tales from South Florida. And remember, whenever possible, be kind, because it's always possible. Take care of yourself. Peace.